Last time we looked at the basic principles of how volume data can be used to give an indication of the commitment behind a move in price. By understanding if there is a significant commitment or not to the price move can help to give clues as to the probability of what might happen next. But I also issued a warning. You can't simply look at the level of volume in isolation because there's a natural and predictable underlying pattern to the volume throughout the day, irrespective of what the price action is doing. So what you actually need to do is look at whether the volume is high or low relative to what the volume usually does at that particular time of day. And I'm going to explain the principles of how to do that in this episode. Stay tuned. So let's take this up where we left it last time. And we looked at this principle of measuring the volume during a particular price move. So for example, at this point here, let's say as the price is falling, the volume is low or falling itself. We talked about the way that this indicates there's a low level of commitment to the move. And when there's a low level of commitment, the probabilities turn in the favor of the price changing direction and carrying on in this case with a continuation of the trend. However, if the volume during this period of time is high, this shows a high level of commitment to the move and therefore the probabilities are more in favor of a continuation of the move in that direction. But at this point, I issued a warning. And I said that volume tends to exhibit patterns based on the time of day. So on this chart that we're looking at here, this represents three days of price action. And if you look at each one of those days, you'll recognize the same pattern in the volume data. So hopefully you can now see how the assessment of volume data isn't as simple as simply saying is the volume high or low or is it rising or falling because it exhibits this pattern day after day. And so what we have to do is compare the volume with what usual volume behavior is. So in basic terms, is the volume currently higher or lower than it normally is for that time of day? Now, this volume data actually reminds me of something, and I live in Yorkshire in the UK, and we have something here called the Yorkshire Three Peaks Challenge. And this is a walk or a hike that takes in the three highest peaks in the counties of Yorkshire. And what you're looking at here is a profile of the height that a walker would experience when doing that walk. And so because of the Three Peaks Challenge, that's the name I tend to give to this pattern, the Three Peak Pattern. So in this episode and future episodes, when you hear me talk about three peaks, it's this pattern in the volume data that I'm referencing. So let's now take a look at this pattern in a chart and look at how we might assess the relative volume instead of the absolute volume. So I'm going to focus in on one particular area of price action, which is this. Now, between these two blue lines, you can see that the price action went down significantly and quickly. And so you might, if you're only looking at the price action, come to the conclusion that there's a lot of commitment to this move. However, we can look to the volume information to give us a better idea of what's actually taking place behind this move. So what I've done is to take this measurement of how far into the day or how far until the end of the day this particular price action was taking place and replicated that on two other days. Now, clearly, in reality, if you were using this kind of analysis to inform trading decisions, you'd be comparing the volume information to days in the past. 
but for our purposes here, I'm just explaining the basic concepts and principles at the moment, and so it doesn't really matter too much about the order of the days. What I then attempted to do is to draw a line through the volume bars, as you can see here in green. And then by doing this on the following two days as well, it allows us to do a visual analysis of how the volume during this rapid and significant fall in price actually compares to other days. But again, just to reiterate, when doing this to actually inform trading decisions, you'd be comparing this to days in the past and maybe using the last 10 days or maybe even 20 days or more. But remember, for the purposes of this episode, I'm just interested in the basic concepts of this right now. By drawing two lines across from this visual representation of the volume level, it's interesting because we can see of the three days, this is actually the lowest volume. Now, what this says to me, using the basic principles that we talked about last time, is that because, relatively speaking, there's less volume activity, the commitment to the move might not be quite as much as we thought initially. And true enough, if you look at the price action beyond the two blue lines, you can see that after a trading range has finished, the price then continues upwards in line with the prevailing trend, as opposed to this being a reversal of the trend. So by using the volume data in this way, performing a visual relative assessment told us that the probabilities were more in favor of the price going up, which of course it did. Let's now look at another part of the chart over on the right hand side here. So this, for this particular time of day, is relatively high compared to the two previous days. If we visually look at what was happening during this period of time, we've got this large rise in price. Because the volume is telling us that there's a high level of commitment to this rise, what it means is that the probabilities have turned more in favour of a continuation of the rise than it has of a reversal. And again, look what happens to the price next. It continues upwards. And so these are just two examples of how using relative volume assessment gives us added intelligence to what the price might do next. But of course, what I've done here is just a visual assessment to explain the concept. In reality, you would want to do something more quantifiable and to measure that relative behavior as part of the underlying daily patterns. And that brings me on to the next episode. In this, I'll be doing exactly that. And I'll be doing it for a number of asset classes to show you the differences in the underlying patterns and to explain how we can, in a quantifiable way, assess that relative volume in order to help us with those decisions in each of those classes. And as part of that, I'll be covering a number of currency pairs, stock indices, and also a couple of commodities. So be sure to tune in for that next episode. In the meantime, please do remember to give me a like. And now until next time, trade safe.